Oh, hopefully you had a chance to try the resize out. Let's do it together now uh, and see, see if you were getting something. So right here, we got to check if we're at capacity. Okay, well, that's easy. If bag array dot length equals equals count. Okay, and we don't want to hard code anything because the bag array length is going to keep on increasing, right? Every time we resize this thing. And so we got to make it so that we're always checking the current bag array length. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call resize, which we can just call, right? But with our new capacity, which we can do two times bag array dot length. So we're passing in uh, twice the length uh, to our resize function. So that's going to be passed in for new capacity. And we're going to create an array with the new capacity. Okay, so whatever you want, it's an integer array, right? New array equals new int. It's always the same, right? If you're creating an integer array, new whatever the type is, right? If you're creating a ball array, it'd be new ball with the square brackets and we can say new capacity. All right, so far so good, right? Copy over the elements of the old array to the new array. So the old array is at count, right, or length, either way it works. So if we're gonna cycle through the whole old array, how do we do it? Well, we say for int i equals zero, right? i is less than count or length or bag array dot length, either one, right? i equals i plus one, okay? And think about it for the for case, let's say the beginning case where it's the default value, right? i equals zero, i equals one, i equals two, i equals three. We've gone through all of the indices of this thing, right? Zero, one, two, and three. Okay, so that does the right thing for us. It cycles through the array, and that's why we say arrays and for loops have this intimate relationship because a for loop allows us to process an array, to go through every value of an array. And this is the way we do it, okay? So we're going through all the values of the current bag array, okay? And we're setting the new arrays indexes to the, the box in the new array, so the new array zero to bag array zero index, right? And the new array is one to bag array is one. I, I, there's a better way for me to say that in English, but I think you, you get it, okay? So remember, when we, when we do the equal symbol, right? It's the stuff on the right side being copied over to the stuff on the left-hand side, right? RHS and LHS, right? Left-hand side and right-hand side. So we can say new array, I, and this is common, right? Because we're cycling through this. We're gonna use I so it gets a different index each time through this. Equals, um, and what was it? Bag array? Bag array I, okay? Pretty cool, all right? So we've gotten to the point where new array equals bag array, all right? And uh, so now at this point, when we end here, when we get out here, right? What we have is we have the new array as this eight array, eight element array or double, whatever it happens to be of the old array with all the values of the old array. So it's a bigger bag, but it has the old values. So it's like we swapped it, right? Uh, now the final thing we have to do is our private variable is bag array. That's our state variable. And we want that to be its new state, right? A bigger bag, but with the same values in it, okay? How do we do that? We just shallow copy it over. So bag array equals new array, and we're done. All right, new array is still pointing to this, but new array will drop out of scope here. Bag array is pointing to this, okay? So since it's still referencing this, this will stay in memory. Nothing's referencing the old array anymore, and so Java will do something called garbage collection, where it'll release that memory to be used by other programs or our program when we create other variables and things like that. It'll release it back into the pool of memory, okay? Um, because nothing is referencing it, okay? Uh, and so now we've resized it. Well, what's cool about this is at this point, we have resized our bag array, right? And so now we can say bag array count target because 
zero, one, two, three, four is open for business, right? Because bag's now pointing to this new array, okay? And we can say count equals count plus one because there's now five things in here and five is the next place we're going to insert. Hopefully that makes sense, all right? Um, and if you're able to get it, that's really good. Uh, there are other ways to do this. Um, you could actually just put this whole resize thing in here. And uh, I just think it looks nicer to do it this way. Um, all right, so now that you know how to cycle through this thing, all right, I want you to write two string for this. I know, two string, right? So what we're gonna do, remember two string is one of the overloaded uh, functions from, from object, right? Why am I, I'm blanking here. Uh, so let's do that real quickly. It's gonna return, we're gonna return a string to string, um, okay, uh, and uh, what are we gonna do? Well, I want you to cycle through and spit out all the numbers that happen to be in this bag, uh, um, separated by like a comma. Let's do a comma or like a space. Why don't we just separate by a space? Actually, there's no reason for a comma, okay? So it needs to start at the beginning of the array and go to the end of the array, okay? But not all the way to length, right? Because not everything in the array is valid values, all right? Some of it is trash, right? So we have a variable that tells us how many of the values in the array are valid, right? And so I want you to figure out how we're going to return a string with that stuff, okay? Remember, we can create a string with string to return. Okay, that's an empty string. And if I say to return plus equals, I don't know, five, to return will now equal, or five space if you wanna do that. To return will now equal whatever it was before plus a space, right? And then if I go to return plus equals, oh, well, well, maybe we shouldn't use plus equals. Maybe we should use to return equals to return plus five, right? That's saying the old value of to return and add the string five to it, okay? So what that'll look like is that'll look like whatever to return was before with five to it. So now to return will equal this, right? Uh, I'm sorry, this. And if I do that, right, then, uh, then to return will equal this five space and then seven space, okay? Do you see that's how that's happening? So you can, this plus operation concatenates in string. I think all of you know this, uh, but in case you were wondering uh, about what this does, in integer world, this adds the numbers, which it should, right? In string world, it concatenates, which means it takes whatever strings to the right-hand side of the, whatever substrings to the right-hand side of the plus and shoves it in to the string on the left-hand side at the end. And that's overwrites to return in memory. So that makes sense, right? So we're gonna go through, and we're gonna see the data of the first one, and we're going to concatenate it to to return. We'll see the data of the second one, concatenate it to to return, and see the data of the third one, concatenate to to return. All the way, uh, we'll go through all the valid values and do that. And then at the end, we should return to return, and that should allow to string to work, okay? Um, if you do that correctly, you should be able to test it in main. Uh, but we can we can talk about that uh, in the in the next video. All right. So we're doing two string in the array world.